Ben's heart raced as he awoke to a mysterious glow. He glanced at his nightstand and marveled. The magic singing bowl was aglow. Excitedly, he called his cousins Jenna and Thomas. The singing bowl is showing a new image, he exclaimed. They knew what it meant. A new order had come, and they were off on another time-traveling adventure. The trio soon met at their uncle's museum, where Jenna looked at the bowl. Notre Dame! She shouted enthusiastically. The Cathedral of Paris! There must be a display case here about it! They searched until they found the Paris showcase, and the singing bowl hummed louder the closer they got. Hand in hand, they flicked the singing bowl and were pulled into the display case by a vortex. Suddenly, they were surrounded by a bright light and felt a strong wind whipping past them. When they opened their eyes, they found themselves standing in front of a towering wall of stone. They looked around in amazement, not quite sure where they were or when they had landed. They noticed that their clothes had changed into something more suitable for the time. Wow, this is amazing, Thomas exclaimed, taking in the sight of the towering wall in front of them. Where are we? Thomas and Benjamin were still trying to make sense of where and when they were, when Jenna spoke up, her eyes scanning the area. I think we're in Paris during the construction of Notre Dame in the Middle Ages, she said. She had read a lot about Notre Dame and was excited to see it being built. Look, the rose windows haven't even been installed yet. Just as they were about to explore the bustling streets of medieval Paris further, they heard a loud crash and clinking from the other side of the construction site. What was that? Ben asked, looking in the direction of the noise. Let's go find out, Thomas said, his curiosity getting the better of him. The three kids made their way around the construction site, trying to locate the source of the noise. There they found three cloaked and hooded men, armed with axes, pounding on some wooden crates. The contents of the crates were shattering suspiciously. Hey, what are you doing? Thomas shouted surprised that he spoke French without thinking about it. The men looked up, shocked to see the kids. They quickly dropped their tools and ran off. Just as the kids were trying to look at what the men had destroyed, they heard the rattling noise of some guards running towards them. Hey, stop that! One of the guards shouted. The guards had some torches with them and surveyed the damage done. One of them ran toward Thomas. Why did you do that? He barked at the boy. But before Thomas could say it wasn't them, another man intervened. Out of breath, he held onto one of the wooden crates. Commander, don't be silly. These children couldn't possibly have done it, he said. Right, Jenna replied. We saw three men run away. It was them. Did you recognize one of them? The commander asked. No, unfortunately not, Jenna replied. The commander sighed. One of the guards grabbed a piece of glass from the ground. Ben squinted at the broken pieces and gasped. That was supposed to be the beautiful rose window of Notre Dame. They destroyed it. Another guard noticed something else. He picked up something shiny from the ground and handed it to the commander with a meaningful look. What's that? The commander asked, grabbing the item from his hand. It's a silver coin, the guard replied. The commander nodded in agreement. It looks like Spanish coins. These must have been some Spanish merchants who have been rumored for some time now to be destroying objects to sell their own goods. The kids glanced at each other doubtfully. They didn't think the merchants looked Spanish at all. The commander narrowed his eyes and said firmly, We need proof before we can do anything about it. The three children exchanged looks before they all nodded in agreement. It was time to investigate. Excited for an adventure, they started thinking of ways to prove what had really happened at Notre Dame. They asked around for more information about these mysterious Spanish merchants, and soon learned that some Parisian merchants had been spreading rumors about them. With their hearts pounding with excitement, the three children set out for the guildhouse of the Parisian merchants determined to get to the bottom of this mystery. However, when they arrived at the guildhouse of these merchants, they were forbidden to enter. Ben pointed at a tree next to the house. We don't need to enter, 
We can just climb this tree and peek inside, Ben said with a mischievous grin. Thomas shrugged. It's worth a try. So they all started climbing up, feeling the rough bark against their palms. As they reached higher and higher, Jenna could smell the sweet scent of flowers from nearby gardens. Finally, they were close enough to see through a window into the house. To their surprise, they saw silver coins and axes, just like those used by the attackers earlier. Look! Jenna exclaimed in joy as she pointed at them. But she accidentally broke a branch in the midst of her excitement. Careful! Thomas grabbed her arm before she could fall, but it was too late. A merchant had noticed them. Their eyes grew wide with fear. Without a moment's hesitation, the children jumped from the tree and ran around the house. Their feet pounded the ground as they raced around the corner. As soon as they heard a voice calling after them, they scrambled over a wall and ducked behind it, careful to remain hidden. To their surprise, there was a cart with glass panes standing in the backyard of the Merchant Guild. I think I understand what is happening here. Jenna gasped as she pieced together everything that had happened so far. These Paris merchants have spread rumors about their competitors from Spain so that people would buy from them instead. The children looked at each other with determination. Now that they had evidence to prove it, it was time for them to go back to the guard. The kids returned and showed the commander their evidence. He thanked them, and a little later, the Parisian merchants were arrested. In front of the guard's quarters, some Spanish merchants waited for the children. Your courage and intelligence saved us from being falsely accused, one of them said gratefully. The Spanish presented them with a part of the broken rose window as a thank you. The kids felt a surge of pride as they accepted it. They had helped to preserve an important piece of history and prevented an innocent group of people from being falsely accused and driven out of town. The children smiled at each other before flicking against the singing bowl. Soon they were finding themselves back in their own time, but with a wealth of knowledge and memories from their adventure. And the children were already looking forward to new adventurous trips in the time treasury.